is a war. It's happening now. It will decide the fate of humanity. The time to choose sides has come. We are the resistance. We are the info war. Now, this is a big deal, folks. Because you've got Al Gore saying in, in 2007, 2009, in countless speeches, that by the winter and the summer of 2013, we would see a completely melted northern ice cap. Well, it grew at record numbers, and Mark Moreno is the master and advises Congress and has all the scientists that he researches with on his site, climatedepot.com. He has all the actual numbers, but just in a general sense, southern pole getting bigger. Northern Pole getting bigger. They always point in the summer at, at, at it shrinking with a satellite. They always shrink. That's why the Vikings talked about a northern passage into Russia, you know, in writings a thousand years old, as old as Beowulf. But they use the public's ignorance and say polar bears can't swim, penguins can't swim. They talk about penguins are going to drown at the North Pole, that there are no penguins at the North Pole. I mean, this is the kind of stuff we've seen and covered. Al Gore and all his lies that have been proven in court in England. They can't show school kids, you know, his film in England because it's been proven to be a fraud. And like 65 lies, I think, proven in quarter was it 63. I forget. The point is, now they're all over the news. National Geographic just came in the mail. I've been taking it since I was a kid. My grandmother still gives it to me. God, rest, God bless her soul. One of them died. But they used to both give it to me. But the point is, one of them still gives it to me. The one that's alive. It said, we're going to be flooded and dead next year. And, and that the cold is all caused by this. CBS News is now reporting with a... It's beyond a quack, and that's what Mark's here to tell us about. Uh, the most incredible thing ever, that, that, this, this, that this record cold temp and the Great Lakes freezing is a heat wave. Uh, so up is down, down is up. Raising the debt ceiling will not raise your debt. Uh, you can keep your doctor. Your premium will go down, not up. I did not have sex with that lady. I mean, the level of lying here. So to break this down is Mark Moreno of Climate Depot. Dot com. Mark, this is simply amazing, and it ties in to a piece of news I'm going to go to in a moment after you've had a chance to break things down. But thank you for joining us, sir. Hey, thank you, Alex. Happy to be here. Yes, uh, Al Gore made all sorts of predictions about the Arctic, about the Antarctica. The United Nations is on record about global sea ice. We are now well above average for global sea ice. And, in fact, we've had, depending on what month and what you look at it, Earth has had more ice in general uh, than we've had probably in the last 20 or 25 years, and it's on an increasing trend. The Antarctica, uh, the, the, which is the South Pole, has had been at or near and exceeded record extent for the last several years, and this year it's breaking all-time records, the highest they've ever had since satellite monitoring began. In the Arctic, we had an incredible year-to-year, -year, the largest year-to-year -year recovery of Arctic ice, and the Arctic has diminished some since the late 1970s, but think back. When did we start monitoring Arctic ice with satellites? At the end of the 40-year global cooling scare, the coming ice age scare. So, yes, Arctic has lost ice since that period. But uh, there's indications this year that the older, thicker ice is now being wedged and that it's not going it, to it lose any significant, anything significant or near record like Al Gore and others are predicting. But both poles had a record year in, in their own ways, and, and now global sea ice is doing well above average. But what's most shocking is when we have heat waves, and be they in Moscow, be they in Australia, no matter where they are, that's blamed on man-made global warming. When we now have record cold, instead of just saying, well, that's an exception, the global warming activists, including Al Gore, who now says it's consistent, are blaming, quote, excess heat in the atmosphere for destabilizing the Arctic air mass and essentially making the jet stream dive down with the polar vortex. They come up with all these convoluted explanations, and now... Everything, every weather event is consistent with man-made global warming. But it gets better. Up on your site, graduate. you looked You looked up who the CBS expert is. They might as well have gotten uh, Johnny Carson as the great Karnak. Yes, yeah, so this is an amazing story. That you know, It's a Climate Depot exclusive. Just, just posted this this morning, or about, actually about two hours ago. The, the CBS expert on CBS This Morning, that they had on to, to explain how global warming is causing record cold and snow was a, a city college, New York City College physicist named Michio Keiku. And Michio Keiku was
was only identified as a professor on this show, and he claimed that the excess heat in the Arctic was contra- you know, against intuition, essentially causing all of this record cold and heat. Now, before we even knew, and I'll get to what he is in a moment, scientists were trashing CBS News for featuring this guy's views. In fact, um, Ph.D. meteorologist uh, Ryan Mao of the, of the Weather Bell said that, and he quote, no effing clue what Michio is talking about. And these are in quotes. I'm, I'm quote, he called him a festering wound on the field of meteorology. These are what his colleagues, uh, it wasn't even his colleagues, or this man's you know, a physicist who doesn't even really study the weather. These are what his colleagues called him, was a festering wound. And this is before we found out that this is a paranormal a paranormal guru, if you will. Uh, Michio Kuku, the, the, I said Kuku, by, um, strictly by accident or Freudian slip, I'm not sure, but Keku, um, was featured by CBS, and he promotes things like telepathy, telekinesis, mind reading, and uh, on his website, and this is all part of what some people would call magic, mentalism, uh, uh, telepathy is where you sort of communicate without using any... So what you're saying, senses. you've always said it's based on voodoo, and now they're officially doing it. <laughs> and telekinesis is the alleged psychic ability of allowing a person to influence a physical system without physical interaction. In other, in other words... It's a fancy way of sort of like mind-altering uh, a way of, of looking at things. Now, it goes on. He has a whole book on this. He's been featured. He actually went on and let Stephen Colbert make fun of him on the, the Daily Show or whatever. That's not the Daily Show, but whatever Stephen Colbert's show is. And this man, his book is called The Future of the Mind. He's claiming that feats such as... Photog photographing dreams, uploading memories, mentally controlled robots, uh, and telekinesis telepathy have already been achieved. And he goes further and says we're going to have a complete uh, map of the brain, and scientists are going to be able to send our consciousness throughout the universe. So the point is he is not a meteorologist, and CBS knew that but never thought to mention it. No. In fact, they couldn't pick a more extreme outlier, A, on the science of global warming. His comments were just, again, deemed as, a, uh, as no effing clue by another meteorologist. And the fact that this is a, um, a man into, like, essentially mentalism. This is a guy who, who belongs on a Las Vegas stage uh, performance, not someone who should be uh, consulted as a weather expert. And this is interesting to see what CBS News does about this because they'll feature, they, they won't feature any skeptical scientists. And if they do, if some skeptical scientist got a $200 you know, uh, fee 25 years ago by some fossil fuel industry, they'll, they'll say he's discredited and no one can talk to him. But someone else comes on and promotes, uh, promotes telepathy and telekinesis, mind reading, and they're portrayed as the, uh, the esteemed expert by CBS News. By the way, it's the same network where Scott Pelley has actually on record, that the current CBS News anchor is on record when he was with 60 Minutes a few years back, 2007, I believe, saying that he would not interview any global warming skeptical scientist for the same reason he wouldn't interview anyone who was skeptical of the Holocaust. Uh, in other words, they're making direct comparisons uh, of, 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 uh, of uh, the Holocaust, and they will not interview them. So this is this is an amazing thing uh, to see CBS promoting a mind reading expert as a climate expert. Well, let me ask you this question: uh, You know, I mean, we know almost all the scientists. The 2000 they claimed it signed on unanimous. Al Gore said back in 2006, uh, "There's no carbon tax, no plan for that." It's unanimous Congress. All scientists agree. Uh, that uh, man-made global warming is is real and that we've got to do something. And then I have the clips that's in my film Endgame. The congressmen are like, well, wait, there are a bunch of scientists that don't agree. And he goes, no, only ones that believe we didn't land on the moon and blah, blah, blah. Well, they've yeah. got Professor Cuckoo over there. I mean, Mike, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sorry, but me too. I got that confused. It's like Obama, Osama. The point is, you've got Professor Aku or whatever his name is uh, over there. If they've got all these thousands of scientists, which it turned out almost none of them had actually signed on, they had just been put on the list or, or been agreed to be sent UN material, so they were put on there fraudulently, yeah. that's a whole other controversy you've covered and Lord Moncton have covered in great detail. But if they've got all these great meteorologists and all these great planetologists, basically, who are ready to come on and say it's so real, why'd they have to get a uh, goblin chaser? And that's the question. And that's what's fascinating about this is they're, they're, what they're doing is they're pushing the new narrative. And the new narrative, 
uh, is described by the New York Times as global weirding. And because this is relatively new in the global warming debate, it's only the last maybe year that it's really taken on a full head of steam. It's only been around a few years before that. The idea is we used to talk about unprecedented temperature rise, allegedly. And they would talk about the global temperature. The Earth has a fever, to use Al Gore's phrase. When that failed, and we're going on 17-plus years, actually, Lord Monson has a new analysis out. It's like 17 years, five months, with no global warming, and it's actually been global, slight global cooling since 2002. Alex, it's so bad that every high school kid today has never experienced global warming in their lifetime. And you can go a step further now and say that every elementary school kid has only experienced a slight global cooling in their lifetime. So when you're faced with that as a PR disaster... You've got to change the narrative. So the new narrative is every weather event, be it record cold, snow, weather, is all part of global warming. And in order to push that, you've got to get Las Vegas show acts like Professor Keiku and people who do mentalism and mind reading and all sorts of things like that. Because you're not going to find the legitimate scientists coming around yet. You will get more legitimate scientists, saying, global warming scientists, saying things like, well, it's consistent with and other things. But, you know, in order to push the envelope, you've got to reach beyond the known world. If you the globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. For a limited time, we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality. InfoWarsLife.com but here's the bottom line. There are real environmental issues and real concerns I have. But giving uh, total power over to the kleptocrats to run everything uh, in the name of them being saviors of the earth and buying carbon credits from Al Gore and Obama is a fraud. And here's an article out of Breitbart today. It's actually from AFP, French News Agency. Breitbart carried it. One in four Americans unaware that earth circles the sun in a new study conducted by the National Science Foundation. Um, and an average of 6.5 uh, got it correctly. Just 74% of respondents knew that Earth revolved around the sun. And, and, and here's the problem. And I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not saying Republicans are super smart on average. But compared to Democrats, it's like a, it's like a human compared to a, a rat or something. Or I guess rats are kind of smart. That's insulting to rats. Mark, in closing, the only way they can get away with this is total scientific ignorance. So now we know why they want to dumb people down. So what do you make of this one in four not knowing uh, that the earth circles the sun? I think it's the other way around. What do we do about this? What do you expect them to do now? Because they're not stopping. They're just going forward. Uh, Obama's announced he's going to do environmental takeover without Congress. What do we do? Well, yeah, and also Obama, the, the billion-dollar slush fund they're starting today, uh, they announced today. Uh, when you mentioned you know, the education here in that poll you just cited, this, if you go into the classrooms now and you talk to the psychiatrists and anything else, the anxiety among young people about eco-fairs and eco-doom, they know more about the fear of oceans overrunning their homes than they do about whether the earth uh, rotates around the, the sun or not. And this is, a, um, this is the core of what's going on. They're being propagandized from a very young age with all the wrong things, be it through our Hollywood culture, through the textbooks on a lot of these politically scientific things, especially when it comes to global warming. And so now when they ask them other basic scientific questions, of course they're ignorant because their heads have no more room. They've crammed it with so much uh, junk, particularly when it comes to global warming. Today, in fact, John Holdren, uh, one of your favorites, Obama's science czar, came out and announced, quote, weather practically everywhere is being caused by climate change, unquote. In other words, every weather event that happens is now created by mankind, influenced heavily by mankind. This is what John Holden said. Interestingly enough, he was immediately, just like Professor Keiku, the, the mystic 
on CBS News, was essentially slammed. He's being slammed by scientists now. Uh, you know, uh, Holdren claimed that global climate change is increasing droughts. Actual study from Obama administration, droughts have become shorter, less frequent, and smaller part of the U.S. over the last century. Holdren is defying his own government science. He's giving out 100% wrong information. That's the story today. Not that school kids are getting basic science wrong, but that Obama's science advisor is failing basic science uh, of, of what he's, uh, he, he's uh, tasked to be an expert in, global warming. This man is failing. And, and, and on my website today, Climate Depot, Roger Pilkey Jr., does a, a professor, an extreme weather expert, takes down John Holdren for just utter drivel that he's promoting today, unchallenged, by the way, in the media. By the way, Mark, I know you've got to go advise Congress and go on national TV in a minute. You've got to leave. But anybody you advise us that you think we should get on to break down the science, I'd love to have them on. But, you know, we're winning the political battle. In closing, as I said, they don't care. They're just rolling forward. What do we do? Because they use this to power grab any jurisdiction they want, saying climate's changing everywhere. Well, of course climate's changing. It's always changing. What do we do to beat them in a nutshell? Well, here's two things. First of all, had Mitt Romney won, Mitt Romney, if you've noticed, people would say, well, vote, uh, you know, vote a new president in. Well, Mitt Romney just came out about a week ago and announced that he's back on the global warming bandwagon. Remember when he ran, he was a global warming believer. Then he got all the pressure. Then he backed down. Well, now he's back that he doesn't have the pressure for office. So Republicans aren't the answer. And Mitt Romney actually said that he would not have stopped Obama's EPA from doing what Obama's about to do. So I don't know that the Republican Party is capable. The biggest thing we have to do is try to get the GOP Congress to defund the EPA. You are watching the best of the Alex Jones Show. Weekdays from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. Watch live at Infowars.com forward slash show or become a member of Infowarsnews.com and help us take resistance to the next level.